Hi guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to another DIY upcycling video. I have a bunch of antiques here. Maybe not antiques, but things that I found at Goodwill that I'm gonna upcycle for you and hopefully sell in my antique booth for a good profit. So most of the things I'm working on today are canisters and I have a couple paint cans. I'm gonna be using some stamps and some, uh, what are they called, molds for clay. Um, from Iron Orchid Designs. I think that's gonna help kind of elevate these pieces and help me to sell them for a higher dollar. So let's just jump right into the projects and I'll show you what I'm working on. So I think I've narrowed down what I'm working on today to the items you see here. If you missed my recent Goodwill haul, um, I shared a little bit more information about like where I bought everything and how much everything was. Uh, most of this though did come from various goodwills um, including a goodwill outlet so make sure you go back and watch that video because the prices are pretty uh, phenomenal that I got for some of these smalls um, I just really enjoyed my goodwill outlet experience everything was so cheap so anyway jumping right into this I have these two paint cans I'm gonna really dress these up I'm excited to work on those I am using these molds today. I know a lot of people ask where I buy my Iron Orchid stuff. Now the shop that I have a booth at actually is a retailer of Iron Orchid so it's kind of easy for me to just go up there or whenever I'm working I can just pick up something if it looks interesting. Um, these are the birdsong molds. So I really don't know where to tell you guys to buy it from because I'm sure you're going to need like an online retailer. And this one's called He Loves Me. This is all these flowers. Um, unfortunately, I can't sell them because I'm not a retailer and it's just <laughs> not another business that I could jump into right now. I'm already selling Dixie Bell on Etsy. I don't think that I should really jump into Iron Orchid, especially with the baby on the way, but maybe someday. But um, I would just look in your area, look online, maybe there's a list of people that you can find near you or just somebody online that can sell it to you. Um, I have this bucket that I only paid maybe a couple dollars for at the Goodwill outlet. This mirror was three dollars. I have these shutters that I paid two dollars for. And then just some various crocs and jars that I'm going to be embellishing. I did not pay much for anything on this table here, so I think that my profit margins in my antique booth are going to be really good. Um, it's just going to be a little time consuming to get through these but I think it'll be worth it in the end, so let's get started. So my theme for this video, I did not plan this, but I'm being very experimental with some of the methods I'm using and some of the new products I'm trying from Dixie Bell. So for the first piece that you're gonna watch here, I have this kind of older framed mirror and the only reason that I actually bought this is because I could see that I would be able to take the mirror out and then paint this frame easily. There was no way that I was going to try to tape that mirror off. I mean, I know that it wouldn't probably have been that hard, but I was trying to cut corners here. I'm so glad that mirror came out. And since the mirror came out, I decided that I would try to antique the mirror and make it look old. And I thought that would really elevate this piece and make it look vintage and not just like so cute. I thought a nice mirror with the white frame and a wreath would look really cute. But I wanted to antique this and make it um, just kind of fit that more antique style. So I am using the Dixie Belle Black Wax. And like I said, I'm, I'm trying this for the first time. You're watching it here. I've never done this before. I've never even used the Black Wax before. So that's a new product for me. Um, and I'm just wiping it on here and seeing how that goes and it's a bit of a disaster So I switch over to the Dixie Belle grunge gray wax. I got a few different colors in my last haul that I shared with you guys So the swiping of the wax wasn't working. So I started dabbing with the paper towel instead and that was definitely giving me um, a more like aged finish so I was liking that technique really just trying a bunch of different things. Now, as you can see, I've grabbed some cinnamon and I thought the cinnamon was necessary because a lot of times those antiqued mirrors will have like a brownish tinge to them. And not only did this smell amazing, but it really did give a nice aged effect. So the cinnamon was like a real winner for me. Here I'm kind of going back and forth, trying to figure out how to make <laughs> this look decent. But I think in the end, 
it actually works out and I'm really happy with the final result. Now I'm just stressing with a wet baby wipe. I like to use wipes instead of paper towels because they don't shed. And I didn't use sandpaper because I didn't want to create so much dust yet. But the wipe was taping, taking off more paint than I wanted. So you're going to see me in a minute. I'm just going to grab my brush again that still has a tiny bit of paint left on it. And just go back over the distressed parts that were too much for me. And that just kind of tones it down and makes it not look so distressed. And I thought that gave a really nice effect. And then when I put everything together, I just think it looks really beautiful. I have upcycled so many sets of shutters, I couldn't even guess. So this is a pretty easy project for me at this point. I must say though that the French tip Dixie Bell brush, uh, which is only $9.95 by the way on my Etsy site, uh, really made this project so much easier because it has that nice tapered bristles. So it really got in the slats of the shutters nice and easy. So that really, really helped this project move along. But I'm also using um, a color called drop cloth from Dixie Bell. So it's like a nice off-white and like I said, I've sold many many kinds of these shutters. I kind of always change them up a little bit um, But in general the same type of idea where I paint them distress them Add a wreath add some hangers on the back so that they can be hung on the wall and they typically sell for me really quickly Isn't that second coat of white paint so satisfying? I always dread doing the first coat because it looks terrible, but the second coat, so very nice. I'm nailing in like a brace board for the back. This is just a thin like piece of scrap board that I had. I didn't want anything too heavy, but just something that will keep the shutters from closing. And um, at the end, I'm gonna add some D-ring hangers. I just get them from Home Depot and put one on each side. And that's what I use most of the time when I have like a heavier project or something that I wanna hang on the wall. Um, it's just the D-rings, they're nice and easy to use.
For the topiary, I'm just gonna add a little bird decal. I'm using this iron orchid mold with the iron orchid air dry clay. And I'm gonna Gorilla Glue that right onto the topiary base. And then I'm gonna give the entire thing like a, a painted faux cement treatment. So some girls will mix like baking soda into their paint to achieve this look. I'm just gonna use the Dixie Belle color French linen, which is like the perfect gray cement color. And then once everything's dried, I'm gonna go back over it with the Dixie Belle white wax and then just kind of wipe the wax back off. And that gives a really nice faux cement finish. It's super easy and it really makes pieces look nice and expensive. So I've been really enjoying doing that. And again, that's the French linen color plus the white wax. The white wax is pretty critical to give it that cement effect. Moving on now to my kind of anthropology inspired paint can. I'm gonna use these molds to create just like a, a lot of embellishments kind of going up the side of the can. And I wanna paint this just like a really neutral crockery color at the end. I do use some of the baking soda mixture of about 50% paint, 50% baking soda. After I have all of my molds glued on, I just felt like it needed a little bit more texture. You'll see what I mean later. And um, at the very end, my final step again is to do the white wax all over it. I just think it gives such a nice kind of antiqued look to use the white wax. So my process here is to make my molds, glue them on with the Gorilla Glue, which was a bit of a slippery mess. So I had to be really patient with that part of the process. Um, and then once the molds have had a couple hours to dry and they're firm enough that I can paint them without smashing them, I paint the whole can. I think I use the color um, Sandbar from Dixie Belle, which is like the best crockery color that I've found. I really, really enjoy using that color. Um, so I do a couple coats of the Sandbar paint, and then I do an extra coat of the Sandbar paint mixed with baking soda just around all of the molds to give them more texture. And then I finish the piece with a white wax, and I really like how it turns out in the end. Now moving on to the second paint can, I want to do an entirely different look for this one. So I'm going to be going a little bit more farmhouse with a gingham style pattern. I am going to freehand paint this instead of tape it, uh, mostly just for my sanity. I did not feel like taping all around this paint can. 
Um, and I think it actually turns out really cute when it's hand painted. It's um, just a little more artistic this way. So as you can see right now, I, I did the first coat, which was the color drop cloth. Now I'm using the color sandbar, I do believe, to do the horizontal stripes. For my vertical stripes, I'm going to go in and use the French linen color, which is that nice gray that I had used earlier on the topiary piece behind me, or behind the can, I should say. So now I'm just going to go around and do my vertical stripes. I'm trying to kind of keep my spacing the same so that my lines are all the same thickness. Of course, I'm doing this by hand, so it's not going to be perfect, but that's kind of the look I'm going for. So I'm doing all the vertical stripes in the French linen. And once those stripes have dried, I'm going to take um, my next color, which is Spanish Moss, which is another new favorite color of mine. It's like the softest grayish green. I really, really like it, but it is a little bit darker than the French linen. So I'm using my darkest color last. And anywhere that my colored stripes overlap, I am painting that square, the Spanish Moss, so that the square kind of sticks out a little bit more. And to finish this piece off, I'm using the Iron Orchid design stamps yet again. And I'm just gonna stamp the word home on the front in a black ink. Now moving on to the ceramic canisters. First, I'm gonna fix that chip that was in this canister. I'm using the air dry clay. This is, again, another experiment, but I think it works out in the end. It dried really nicely. So I'm just fixing that there. And then I'm going to be painting both of these crocs um, with just some like vintage -y stripes. And I'm gonna go in a really bold green, which is my favorite color. And I think for springtime and even for summer, these are going to look beautiful. So right now I'm just kind of figuring out where I want my stripes to go. I'm going to do two kind of different styles for each crock. And once I have it all taped, I'm going to use the Dixie Belle primer called Slick Stick. And that's a primer designed for slick surfaces, so it really gives it something to grip to. And once that has dried, I'll do a nice thin couple of coats of that. Then I'm going to be using the Dixie Belle color called Evergreen, which I've been using a lot. Sometimes I'll mix it with black to make it a little bit darker, but today I'm just going um, with the full strength Evergreen color, so it's very intense. And then to seal it all up, I do finish it up with the white wax again. I just really love the effect of that, and I think that these turn out so cute in the end. Oh, 
miles out of sand, reaching for the ground. This will always align. We lose track of time. Let a pie now we climb. Oh, oh, oh. dreamy, breezy, we go. Really quickly, I threw in a, another project because why not? I wanted to show you guys how the black wax worked out for me. I'm using it on this tin from Dollar Tree and I already did my crockery stamp on there with the clay and it's already dried. So I wanted to see if I could get the black wax to set into the font and make the words look black and just see how that went. Cause normally I do it with the white wax. So I had to do a little bit of finagling here. Um, it definitely doesn't wipe off as well as I hoped it would from the outer surface. I wanted it to really just kind of settle into the cracks. So I have a little bit more um, experimenting to do with the black wax for sure, but I thought that this looked pretty cool in the end either way. Alright guys, that wraps up another DIY video. I hope you enjoyed all these projects. Like I mentioned before, some of these are pretty experimental. Um, so, I mean, it's okay if you're not like a huge fan of everything that I made today. My husband flat out said he didn't even like this one. So, you know, I like to assume that when he says he doesn't like things that he's probably just wrong. But, you know, maybe you guys don't like it either. It's definitely an experiment, but I think it turned out really cool. So, you know... I'm just going to roll with it and see how it sells for me. I think it's really neat. I actually love how this old mirror turned out. What I am noticing though is that the wax doesn't set very well on the glass. So I might have to go back and spray the mirror with like some polycrylic or something, which isn't a big deal. Here's how the little shutter turned out. Nice and cute. And then I put those little D-ring hooks on the back so that they can hang it on their wall. I, know I get a lot of questions about what I hang things with. If it's something heavy, it's almost always these uh, D-rings right there. And I just get like a big pack of those from Home Depot. Here's this paint bucket. And then here's how the two canisters turned out. Now as far as durability, I'm honestly just not sure. Now I've white waxed them. I think that when I go and spray my mirror with the polycrylic, I'm thinking about doing a coat, especially on this one because there's so much more paint. I kind of feel like this one's going to be okay, but I will put for decoration only on the sales tag and to just like dust with a dry cloth. Like I wouldn't want them to be putting this in the dishwasher or anything. 
here's how my topiary turned out. I still need to spray it with hairspray. I don't own any hairspray. I was born in 1989, so I kind of miss the hairspray phase. <laughs> it's just not something I even own, so I will try that though. So thank you to everybody who told me to spray it with hairspray so that it stops shedding everywhere. But actually, it's kind of calmed down a bit anyway. I think I just had to get all the loose leaves off. I think the bird turned out really cute. And it truly looks like cement when you use the gray French linen color with the white wax. I just think it looks really nice. And this was another experiment. I think it looks good. Maybe not great. I could use some more practice with the black wax. But I mean, it looks a lot cooler than it did when I first bought it. That was a galvanized tin from Dollar Tree. A little shout out to Aldi for these cute little cutting boards. These come in a pack of four right now, and I'm filming this in the first week of April 2021. So these are going to be like a limited time thing. If you are familiar with Aldi, they'll have like special things like that. So they come in a square pack, squares and rectangles, and then like the ovals and circles. A four pack of those for $5. They're so cute. So I bought three packs because I'm normal. Look how cute they are just displayed everywhere. And then, is that it? I feel like I did so much more, but this looks like everything. So once again, I hope you liked everything. Let me know in the comments what your favorite project was. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention, I didn't end up doing anything with the little primitive bucket. Someone suggested that I just leave it as is and that it would make someone's day to find that. So I'm just gonna try to sell it as is. I think for spring and summer, I'll have an easy time of selling that. And you know, that saved me some, saves me some work, so I'm not gonna argue with that too much. I feel like I'm forgetting to talk about some things, but I'm very pregnant and tired. So just, if there's anything I left out that you wanna know more about, just let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna let you guys go there. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.